The Dallas Cowboys are back in Oxnard, California, and they are back on the practice field. It's the first installment of Inside Cowboys Training Camp presented by American Airlines. We get an inside look at the passing game when we come back right after this. Welcome back to Oxnard, California. It is Training Camp Live presented by American Airlines. Alongside Rob Phillips, I'm Kyle Yeomans. We are back for another year from Oxnard, the West Coast, the weather, but most importantly, the Dallas Cowboys right back in the thick of things. It's a little cooler than it was in Frisco, maybe by 30 <laughs> degrees or so, and it's nice to be out here, and it's a little bit of a ramp-up period for the Cowboys before they get in pads next week, but it's nice to have football period, right? It's, it's great to be back out here. It's it's almost reminiscent of, well, it felt like we were just here, honestly, but it, with that being said, there's been a lot that's happened over the last 11 months leading up into this point, but now let's step, let's put that all aside, right? Let's watch some practice. How about that? We've got an inside look. They're going the opposite way now, but they're going back and forth. We're going to get a chance to see Dak Prescott and the rest of these quarterbacks throwing. C.D. Lamb working right in front of us at that 40-yard line, and he'll looks like he comes out in motion, taking a throw from Dak Prescott, put it right on the right shoulder. What do you expect out of this wide receiver core? Lots of youth outside of, I mean, I guess maybe a James Washington, but even he is still relatively new to this team. Yeah, we just saw Jalen Tolbert running a route there and, and, and making a catch. Noah Brown out wide. Noah Brown's one of the returning guys here, and there, there are a lot of new faces, like you said. Um, it starts with CeeDee Lamb and and ascending to that number one position, playing the flanker position, but I'm sure they're going to move him around. They want all the receivers to know all three positions, and, and guys have an opportunity to step up, especially with Michael Gallup still rehabbing. He's not out here practicing yet. Uh, we'll see when that timetable is going to be, but it starts with CeeDee. And I, I, to me, Kyle, it's 2018 is the last time I think it was this wide open in terms of roles and opportunities beyond CD who's taken over for Amari Cooper. I was about to say, because when you talk about 2018 in the wide receiver room, it's not necessarily any comfort to a Cowboys fan out there because there was some uncertainty. And of course, you had to trade for Amari Cooper in order to level that out. Luckily, you have an established number one guy, and that is CD Lamb. But with him expected to take a next step, does it take stuff off the field too? Does it take what he has to do not only in the game but in practice like this? Yeah, absolutely. I, I asked him about that during OTAs, actually, the, lead, the leadership part of it, you know, because he's only – he's a young guy, still in his early 20s. Uh, I think he told us he was still – he's still growing. He grew a half an inch in, in the <laughs> offseason, which tells you, okay, he's only a couple years out of college here as he's running a nice stop route from Dak Prescott there. Um, yeah, that's a big part of the room, and that's that's something Amari Cooper, who was more of a lead-by-example guy, but he'd been in the league for several years, and so that that's part of it as well. And, and Jalen Tolbert is a young guy that comes in here with a lot of professionalism that I think will be able to step in right away. Noah Brown catching that pass. I want to stick on Simi Fajoko here. Here you go, seeing the in route, turn around, catching that pass from Will Greer, who, by the way, Greer also in a competition of sorts, maybe for that backup quarterback spot. But let's talk about Fajoko for a split second here, and uh, specifically last year did not show out didn't necessarily have a great rookie season but he has shown growth throughout his time with the Cowboys what do you expect out of him this year I think he's got a great opportunity because I think he they really love his just physical traits coming out of Stanford and one thing he told us when he came out last year uh, as a fifth round draft pick out of college was you know I'm still growing they, they had me play a certain type of, of receiver role in college and I'm still trying to learn all aspects of the position so but in terms of his size his speed his ability to separate He's somebody that's got a great opportunity in these three preseason games to, to get a look and, and, and win a roster spot. You can say the same thing for some of these tight ends on the back half of the roster underneath. Dalton Schultz, franchise tag this season uh, for the Cowboys, uh, nearly $11 million on the salary cap this year, but still nothing in terms of a long-term deal. This tight end room seems like it's wide open past this year. How do you feel about it this season, though? Again, well, hey, it starts with Dalton Schultz, and, and you know any question about his availability for training camp with the contract situation, he's here, he's a pro, uh, he's he's the guy they're going to rely on in the passing game. I think he's got a chance to be a 1,000-yard wide receiver. So now we've transitioned into a new period here, Rob. Looking at a little bit of the team drills back and forth, we can't go completely wide. Of course, NFL video policy states we have to stay tight. <laughs> And let's not give too much away. That's Top secret thing. stuff, Kyle. This is, this is what you get for watching Training Camp Live. We've got Cooper Rush going with the number twos at the moment. Handoff left. As that's Rico Dowdle wearing the number 23 this season, and he will roam. 
into the secondary. And, and let's talk about the linebacking core at the moment. You see a couple of those guys out there uh, with Luke Gifford. Jabril Cox actually getting some action. He was expected to go on pup, and then ultimately – He's available, at least in limited action. Yeah, he'll be on a rep count. Last year's fourth-round draft pick coming off the ACL. And look, they need him to step into Keanu Neal's role from last season, maybe playing up to 50% of the snaps in that linebacker rotation. Man in motion is rushing the shotgun. Two-step drop and a quick completion over the middle to Jeremy Sprinkle. Another veteran tight end. We just finished talking about some of the tight ends. What does he bring to the table into that tight end room? Blocking in the run game. That's where he's made his hay entirely throughout his career in the NFL and and that's that's an area they need to improve on in terms of blocking and space and, and really just the overall aspect of the running game I think a big part of it is Ezekiel Elliott being healthy you know he played hurt for most of the season last year but tight ends out in space Jake Ferguson their draft pick uh, should be able to help with some of that too man in motion it's Noah Brown working to the left Ooh, big blitz up the middle. That was Sam Williams that got in the fray, really got in the face of Cooper Rush. He's one of these guys that at least when the pads come on, he may be must-watch television. I mean, he's showing it without the pads. A fan let us know in the mailbag that the, the combine measurables for Micah Parsons and Sam Williams, very similar, Kyle. Super similar, Very yeah. similar in terms of burst off the edge, speed, and really ability to play multiple positions. So it, I think when Dan Quinn sees Sam Williams, it's, it's just another – chess piece a guy you can move around the formation and make plays so now we've got the first team back out here notable switch here number 73 first round draft pick tyler smith at the left guard spot it's the starting offensive line across the board tyler or excuse me tyron smith then tyler smith tyler biotish zach martin Terrence Steele. it's good to see all five of these guys ready and healthy absolutely and, sem and when you talk about Number 73, Tyler Smith, and his ability to step in possibly as the starting left guard. It's that run game. You think about his his strength and ability to win the line of scrimmage. If he wins the job over Connor McGovern, it's going to be largely because of, because of that trait. Let's see one more play here before we wrap things up. It's a handoff to Zeke. And I guess while, we're, while we are talking about Ezekiel Elliott, what kind of expectations are in his wheelhouse this year? I think he's as long as he stays healthy. I think he's in line for a big season. If you if you look back to the first month of the year before the PCL injury that he played through, he was on pace to be one of the top rushers in the league. I think again, you get some push up front. He stays healthy. They can get that running game back. It's going to make everybody better. So let's wrap things up here on training camp live overall. Rob Phillips, Kyle Yeomans, glad you're with us. We're glad to be back out here in Oxnard, California. Of course, presented by American Airlines. Initial thoughts. I mean, it's an early practice. It's a ramp up. By Mike McCarthy's standards, what have you seen so far? Just getting their feet wet. You know, we're going to get the pads on next week, and this is NFL mandated, so they don't want to have any, you know, anybody pull anything, anybody just kind of ease back in after these five weeks off. But you get a chance to see who's moving around, how guys look, and then we'll get into the good stuff here in a couple days. We will be here for every single practice on Training Camp Live presented by American Airlines. Go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Of course, follow along with everything on DallasCowboys.com. For Rob, I'm Kyle. We'll see you tomorrow.